Venice is one of the most romantic and confusing cities in the world. In this travel guide, we're covering everything you need to know about Venice, Italy. We'll cover where to stay, public transportation hacks, common scams, insider tips, how much to budget, top things to see, and so much more. So sit back, hit that like button, and let's dive in. If you're flying to Venice, you have two airports to consider. Venice's Marco Polo Airport is the larger of Venice's airports, and being under five miles from the city center, this is the most convenient choice. From the airport, you can catch a bus, water bus, or water taxi, and be in the heart of Venice in about 20 minutes. If you fly a smaller airline, you may fly into Venice's Treviso Airport, which is about 30 kilometers away. From here, you can be downtown in about an hour by either taking the train or the shuttle bus. Both are great options to consider. When it comes to Venice, you really have two options where to stay, either in Venice itself or just outside the city limits. The pros of staying in Venice is that you're right in the heart of the action. You're just a short walk from all of Venice's breathtaking sights and charming canal side cafes. We enjoyed staying in Venice because Venice's notorious crowds typically don't form until after 10 a.m. and die down after dusk when the commuting day trippers leave. So if you want to wander Venice's amazing streets without the crowds, it's easier to stay in the city. The main con of staying in Venice is your costs. Lodging options tend to be more expensive staying in the city. Plus, you'll be hit with a tourist tax of two and a half euros per person per night, which can add up real quick. If you choose to stay outside the city, you'll find cheaper and more spacious accommodations, but you'll need to commute in. We recommend staying in Mestre if you're looking to stay just outside the city. Mestre is just 10 minutes away via public transit, so commuting in is relatively straightforward. You can take a regional train from the Mestre train station to Venice's Santa Lucia station. You also can take the T1 tram or one of the many bus lines towards Venezia, which is how Italians spell Venice. Regardless how you arrive in Venice, chances are you'll be near the Santa Lucia train station. This station is located on the island of Venice in about a 20 minute walk from the iconic St. Mark's Square. While busy, it's a surprisingly straightforward train station to navigate. Inside you'll find some shops, and outside you'll be greeted with a breathtaking view of Venice and easy access to one of the only four bridges that cross the Grand Canal. If you're staying in Venice, consider finding somewhere close to the train station to minimize lugging your baggage up and down Venice's many bridges. The closer you stay, the less bridges you'll need to traverse, which is helpful. Alternatively, you can take Venice's water buses or water taxis with your bags to get closer to your lodging, which we'll be covering next. A common way to get around Venice is by Vaporetto, or more commonly called the water bus. There are many different routes that you can take around Venice, and Google Maps is a great tool to identify the most efficient route. For tickets, you can buy them directly from the ticket office. You can either buy a one-way ticket or purchase a daily pass. We found the best way to enjoy Venice is just by wandering the canals on foot, so we didn't need the 24-hour pass. One thing to note is that each station has several piers labeled with different letters, so check the station's main signboard to learn which pier your boat will depart from. If you're looking for a budget conscious way to see Venice's most impressive buildings from the water, we highly recommend taking the Vaporetto Line 1 to San Marco. You want to board this water bus at the Piazzale Roma station, which is its first stop. This is because there are only about 10 outdoor seats located at the back of the boat, and this is your best way to secure them. After validating your ticket at the pier, your ticket is good for 85 minutes. We recommend lining up right at the metal chain to ensure you're the first one to get on and secure the best seats. We also recommend downloading the Rick Steves Grand Canal free audio guide, which is timed perfectly to this water bus' stops, and gives you the history and fun facts along this 45 minute journey. Just remember to bring your headphones. Besides water buses, you have other options to get on the water and navigate this city. Water taxis are available all over Venice, and you can pick one up from the many water taxi terminals near key landmarks. Again, Google Maps is your friend for finding these. While more expensive, we've heard this is a fast and fun way to get around the city and score some great views. The other main way to get on the water in Venice is to take a gondola. You can find gondola stations all over the city, with gondoliers charging 80 euros for a 30 minute ride. You can fit up to five people in the gondola and depending where you're bored, you get different views of the city. If you want to get a great view of the Grand Canal, consider finding a gondola near the main canal. If you prefer floating down smaller channels, you can board a gondola slightly off the beaten path. If you're looking to board a gondola without breaking the bank, there's another option to consider. Located at seven spots along the Grand Canal are Trigettos, which locals use to cross the Grand Canal without needing a bridge. At these stations, it costs just two euros to be ferried from one side of the Grand Canal to the other by gondola, with rides lasting about a minute. So if you're just looking to snag a quick pick in a gondola, this is a great option. Additionally, in our top things to do in Venice video, we cover a hidden spot in Venice with a docked gondola where you're able to take free photos on the canal, so be sure to check that video out as well. While Venice is probably one of the most charming towns we visited, there are a few scams to avoid. The most common scam are pickpockets, which often frequent the areas around the Rialto Bridge and St. Mark's Plaza. So keep a close eye on your belongings while near these high traffic tourist areas. Attention, the pickpockets! 
We've also heard of a scam where cons splatter you with a gel and exclaim that one of Venice's many pigeons actually made a mess on you. And as they offer to help clean, they'll actually pick your pocket. So definitely be wary of this if you see it. Venice might be the least sitting-friendly city in the world. It's actually illegal to sit along many of the canals, bridges, or even in the vast St. Mark's Square. If you take a seat, there are patrols that will kindly ask you to stand, and while it's unlikely you'll be fined, it does make finding a spot to eat takeaway food or rest your legs very difficult. To avoid this, your best bet is to find one of the very rare public benches. We cover one of the few plazas with many public benches in our Venice food tour, where we find a delicious, cheap, and authentic Italian pizza, so check that out if you're looking for an amazing spot to enjoy some takeaway food and rest your legs. To avoid the crowds, we recommend enjoying early morning and late evening visits to the main tourist hotspots. During the day, if you wander just 10 minutes away from St. Mark's, you'll find plenty of deserted, picture-perfect canal side streets and plazas to enjoy, even in the peak hours of Venice's tourist season. This is a great way to just wander around and feel like a local when you're visiting. When we were coming to Venice, we were told the island's pretty small and really overrun with tourists, but we're finding that's not the case at all. The main areas like St. Mark's Plaza can be definitely overrun with tourists and pretty crowded, but once you move into the more residential areas, it actually becomes really tranquil and you can get streets and canals pretty much all to yourself. We've been here a couple days already. We're still exploring and still wandering into new parts and we're still running into beautiful canals like this. They're just scattered absolutely everywhere around the city. It's kind of blowing our mind. We love Venice. Also, if on the odd chance you get sick in Italy, there's a handy website called Doctors in Italy where you can connect with real doctors, which is a handy website to keep in the back pocket. We almost had to use them when we were sick in Florence, but luckily we didn't have to. Venice is full of amazing sights and breathtaking scenery. In our Top Things Do in Venice video, we cover the top spots to see, such as St. Mark's Square, the Rialto Bridge, hidden Banksy paintings, iconic landmarks, local haunts, and much, much more. So be sure to subscribe and check that video out as well. We stayed in Venice for three nights and documented every cent we spent. In total, we spent about $485, or about $242 per person. This included our Airbnb, all our food, tickets we bought, and other expenses along the way. So while Venice is not the cheapest city we visited in Italy, we felt it's possible to see this one-of-a-kind city without breaking the bank. We stayed pretty close to the train station in this small Airbnb, and while it wasn't anything luxurious, it got the job done. All right, so we just arrived in Venice, and this is what our Airbnb looks like here. It was about a five to 10 minute walk from the train station. So not too bad. We have this little mini fridge here. We're getting the AC going. Little kettle. And here is the bathroom here. Little shower. View. Not too shabby. Italy was among the early adopters of the euro, so euros are the currency you'll use during your visit. If you prefer not to carry a hefty amount of cash, you'll be glad to know that credit cards are widely accepted at most restaurants and attractions. When it comes to tipping, it's important to note that tipping is not a common practice in Italy. It's not customary to add a tip to your restaurant bill or taxi fare. But if you wish, you can leave a euro on the table as a gesture of appreciation for excellent service. However, it's worth mentioning that many restaurants may have a fixed cover charge per person for simply sitting at a table. This charge known as caperto, typically amounts to a euro or two per person. Some restaurants don't impose this fee at all, so feel free to ask before sitting down. If you want to pick up an authentic Venetian souvenir on your trip, you have a few options to consider. Venetians have been blowing glass for over a thousand years, so Venice is a great spot to pick up a locally made blown glass piece. You'll find shops selling unique pieces all over the city, but if you head to the Murano Island area, you'll be able to watch live glass blowing demonstrations and pick up a souvenir afterwards. We've heard they package their glass pieces really well, so they're very travel friendly souvenirs. If glass isn't your thing, you can also purchase a Venetian mask. There are mask shops located all over Venice, and these intricate masks have played a major role in medieval and modern Venetian culture. So these can be fun souvenirs as well. If you prefer something more elegant, Venice is also famous for its lace making. So in the city, you should be able to find plenty of authentic doilies and other lace goods. Regardless what you choose, there's plenty of options to pick up an authentic Venetian souvenir.
While many workers in Venice's city center speak English, it's still important to know a few phrases. Ciao means hello and goodbye. Per favore is please. Grazie is thank you. And where is the bathroom is dove il bagno. Let us know in the comments if you found this video helpful and be sure to like this video and subscribe to our channel to see our upcoming content from Italy and all around the world. Next up, we're heading to Trieste, Italy, and then off to Slovenia to check out the amazing capital city of Ljubljana, and then we're swinging by Lake Blood to get married. So lots to look forward to, and we'll see you in the next one. Ciao. And before you click off this video, please consider supporting our Amazon store. Zeppi really wants you to. We sell packing cubes with the days of the week on them to make your travels so much easier. We have a small size and a large size, pup not included.